Twin Jades of Jiangdong. Chapter 3 Peach Blossoms Part 3 Zhou Yu propped Sun Sa up against himself, helping Sun Sa as he limped along the mountain path to exit the stockade village. As the two of them walked out the encampment, Sun Sa was panting heavily in pain. Zhou Yu quickened his step and said, Quick, the ferryman knows who we are. I'm afraid that once our identities are uncovered they will chase us down. Ow ow ow. Sun Sa inhaled in pain from his injured back and asked, What did you say to that bastard? Zhou Yu's heart couldn't help but ache at the sight of Sun Sa's deep whip wounds. However, they couldn't stay here for long, so he had no choice but to bend down and carry Sun Sa on his back and stagger down the mountain. They finally managed to figure out how to escape. Laying on Zhou Yu's back, Sun Sa spoke up, Hey. What? Zhou Yu said. I really hope Hua Xiong does not do anything to my father. Even sending him back to Luyang as a prisoner is okay. Sun Sa then said, I already sent a message to my father the day I arrived at Chu County. Don't worry, it will be a lot easier now that we know more about the situation. Didn't you say that you came here alone? Zhou Yu asked, how did you manage to send him a message? Sun Sa leaned against Zhou Yu and let out a hee hee. Zhou Yu really didn't know what to do with this man. How could he laugh even in this situation? However, after wasting so much time, the sun had already fallen low in the sky. Sun Sa's breathing was getting heavier and heavier. He clearly didn't have the strength to stay awake anymore and fell asleep on Zhou Yu's back. Zhou Yu's heart burned with anxiety. He wanted to leave Mount Gu and go to Shu County to report the news, but Sun Sa was very heavy and he also had to carry Sun Sa's 20 Jin Dragon engraved iron staff. Their weight made Zhou Yu feel utterly exhausted. When dusk arrived, Sun Sa's body temperature had soared rapidly, yet there was no medicine to treat his fever. Zhou Yu could only lay him down in a ravine with a mountain stream coursing through it and check his back injury. Sun Sa breathed evenly, his face slightly flushed. Zhou Yu put him down and used clean water to wash his wounds. He then went to look for healing herbs nearby, chewing them up then applying the herbs on Sun Sa's back. Suddenly, a piercing bird cry rang through the ravine. A completely snow-white falcon spread its wings and flew towards them. Zhou Yu couldn't help but startle in alarm. This type of bird had never been seen around Lake Chao before. Could it be that Hua Xiong had already discovered their real identity and sent a scouting eagle to look for them? The white falcon circled a few times before slowly descending and flew to Sun Sa's side. Zhou Yu immediately understood and ran over quickly. Upon seeing Zhou Yu, the falcon wanted to peck at him, but Sun Sa groggily woke up and said, Fei Yu, stop it. Zhou Yu asked, so you used this bird to deliver the message. Sun Sa smiled at Zhou Yu and said, its name is Fei Yu. This is the messenger bird I have raised ever since I was little. Originally, I planned to bring it along to let you have a look, but when I arrived at Lake Chao, I found that something was not right so I sent it away to deliver a message to my father. Zhou Yu kneeled behind Sun Sa, his mouth chewing up the herbs. The herbs were bitter and astringent, making his whole mouth go numb. Zhou Yu then spread the chewed up herbs onto Sun Sa's back. Sun Sa removed the cloth strip from the white falcon's claws and handed it to Zhou Yu. There was only one line written on the cloth, wait by the west bank of Lake Chao, reinforcements will arrive within a few days. Zhou Yu sighed with relief. Even though he didn't know where Hua Xiong was detaining his father, everything would be easier as long as military reinforcements arrived. Sun Sa knitted his eyebrows in pain and asked, What medicine did you apply on me? That hurt so much. Zhou Yu replied, Quick. There's no time to talk, let's go. After finishing his sentence, Zhou Yu draped Sun Sa's arm over his own shoulder and stumbled away from the ravine, fleeing to the northwest part of Lake Chao. The sky slowly darkened as dusk approached. On the west bank of Lake Chao, a group of riders raced over. At their head was an old man in his sixties, who shouted Sun Sa. What trouble have you caused again this time? General Sun. 
How did you get beaten up like that? Soon Sa replied, Don't worry about it. First, let's gather up the troops and go into the mountain. General Huang. The situation was too dire so I didn't have time to properly report it. I have troubled everyone. I apologize. Soon Sa cupped his hand and gave a formal bow in apology. The old man then angrily said, you have caused your dad to have a hard time finding you. A falcon cry rang out. The white falcon took off from the ground and proceeded to circle around the valley to scout the area. A subordinate brought Soon Sa his armor. While putting on his armor, Soon Sa quickly introduced Zhou Yu to the old man, who turned out to be the troops division commander and Soon Jian's subordinate. After receiving Soon Sa's letter, he had quickly commanded a troop of 400 men to go to Lake Chao and rescue him. Oh! Huang Gai sized up Zhou Yu with his eyes, and said lowly, Your father is Zhou Yi. That's indeed my father, old general. Soon Sa immediately came to Zhou Yu's side and whispered into his ears, Please don't call him old general, he hates it when people call him old. Zhou Yu didn't know whether he should laugh or cry. However, the words had already left his mouth, there was no use to cry over spilled milk. As expected, Huang Gai let out an angry hump, and said, What are you two rascals mumbling about? Do you really think I can't hear you? Soon Sa hurried to smile consolingly and make the proper bows of greeting, before leading the general into the mountain. The sky was filled with bright stars, while the moon secretly concealed itself. Zhou Yu looked at the troop of 400 soldiers that Huang Gai brought and silently compared the strength of both sides. The other side also had a strong general, and Zhou Yu was afraid that once they started fighting, the two sides would be too focused on the conflict and forget about the hostages, which would make negotiations difficult later on. Huang Gai cleared his throat and said, Forget it. Zhou Yu, your father has been a government official for many years, and he is a very upstanding man. I will not bother a junior like you. The men that came with me are not from Shu County, so they are not familiar with the mountain roads of this place. So, I would like to ask if you know the way around here. I do, Zhou Yu immediately replied, General Huang Gai, the opposing side also has a great general. His name is Hua Xiong, and he's under Dongzhou. It would be better to wait until late night and have the troops launch an ambush. Are you looking down on Huang Mao? Huang Gai angrily said, as if I'd give any ounce of respect to such a brat like Hua Xiong. Soon Sa quickly said, General Huang, the opposing side also has hostages in their hands. Why don't we listen to Gong Jin's plan? Zhou Yu's heart was full of apprehension. After all, this was his first time interacting with a military man and Zhou Yu was not familiar with Huang Gai's temperament. Huang Gai, who evidently held him in contempt, smiled coldly and said, As I see it, why do we even need to wait until late night? Soon Sa, you and I will take the lead and storm straight into there. The implied meaning behind Huang Gai's words was that Hua Xiong's hundred some men were clearly not their rivals. General Huang, Zhou Yu mused for a moment before he finally spoke, you've misunderstood me, that was not my intention. For you to come from afar, with the intent of helping me rescue my father, is already a great kindness that I will forever be grateful for. If only there's an effective way to minimize the casualties amongst our brothers as much as possible, then my humble self will dare to entrust this matter to the general. Otherwise, how can Yu's heart be at ease if other officers needed to rush to the rescue? Soon Saga's face changed slightly as he looked at Huang Gai, unsure of what to say this time around. However, surprisingly, Huang Gai's expression relaxed and replied, Good point. One should value the lives of their officers and soldiers. Then, let's follow your plan. Whatever arrangement you have, just tell me. Zhou Yu pondered for a short time, then drew a map of Hua Xiong's army camp on the ground with a tree branch. He pointed out where to assault, where to ambush, where to surround the camp, where to rescue hostages, and where to block the path to prevent the enemy from escaping. 
They could either not do it, or do it to the very end. If Hua Xiang managed to escape, then the information would inevitably leak. Zhou Yu was only afraid that Dong Zhou would not let this slide, so he made a meticulous plan. Now they only needed to wait until late night for the troops to launch an attack. That night, the dark clouds obscured the bright stars. Several groups of men traveled along the path on one side of the canyon and discreetly proceeded up to the high ground. The white falcon flew in circles and let out a vicious cry. Soon Sa reined in his horse to a halt on the mountain slope and looked into the distance at the valley far away. On the other side, a feathered arrow shot out with a whoosh, and the sentry soldier that Hua Xiong assigned to keep watch toppled over without a sound. A group of patrolling soldiers was ambushed from all sides by assassins armed with daggers and crossbows, and they all fell to the ground. Inside the camp, Hua Xiong drank until he was a dead drunk, passing out on the side of the table. In the dark, Zhou Yu stood in the mountain forest with a bronze sword in hand. The brightness of the torch reflected on the sword's blade, shining the light onto the opposite hillside. Soon Sa waved his hand in signal, and the archers raised up their arrows in unison. Grasping a torch in his hand, Soon Sa swept across them with flying speed, igniting the arrowheads. Fuit Soon Sa blew the bamboo whistle, in a flash, fire arrows came flying down from the mountain peaks on both sides like shooting stars, falling toward the camp in the middle of the canyon. It had been three whole days since it last rained. Inside the camp, all of the houses were made of wood, and at this point, they were dried out to the point of being easily set alight. As they burned merrily, someone immediately shouted, Fire! Attack Huang Gai roared out. As if heavenly warriors were descending from above, the Changsha army boldly rushed into the camp. The entire canyon was in chaos, and soon Sarode rode his horse westward. However, on the northern side, there was a carriage racing away from the camp. Sensing the situation was not looking too good, Zhou Yu quickly grasped his longsword and ran across the range of hills rapidly. He let out a long whistle, and the white falcon appeared, leading the way for him as it flew toward the barracks north side. The raging flames burned fiercely, burying many still asleep soldiers in its ocean of fire. As Huang Gai organized the troops to launch a charge multiple times, Hua Xiong's troops had barely managed to grab their weapons before their defense fell apart from the other side's attack. Hua Xiong let out a roar among the blazing flames, tell me who you are. Immediately, Sun Sa rushed in from the side and advanced on Hua Xiong, using both his body and horse to slam into Hua Xiong. Hua Xiong's hangover had yet to dissipate, so he was immediately knocked down onto the ground, stumbling about as he tried to find a weapon. From all around, foot soldiers rushed up. They paid no more heed to the battle around them as they pushed Hua Xiong back onto his horse, leading him in a reckless charge as they escaped out of the valley. The battle started out quickly and also ended quickly. However, the fire had spread to both sides of the mountain top, and thick black smoke billowed, catching the attention of many fishermen by Lake Chao. Holding his sword, Zhou Yu ran wildly and saw a group of soldiers quickly running away. He angrily roared. Where are you fleeing? The group's head was the ferryman from that day. As soon as the ferryman saw Zhou Yu chasing him, he hurriedly ordered his soldiers into a defensive formation, and both sides were embroiled in a pitched battle. Soon Sa rushed over with his troops, which thoroughly crippled the opposing side's fighting spirit, and the hundreds of attacking soldiers left their enemies' dead corpses all over the place. Where is my father? Zhou Yu growled out, hand him over. With his face smeared with blood, and whole body covered in mud, the ferryman coldly smiled and said, it's too late, young Master Zhou. I found it. I have found the Zhou family's horse carriage. A subordinate of Sun Sa hurriedly reported. Not bothering with interrogating the ferryman any longer, Zhou Yu quickly followed after the military messenger. At the crack of dawn, inside the northern canyon of Mount Gu, there was a carriage covered in bloodstains parked under a tree. The daylight was hazy, and thick fogs covered the whole valley. 
Zhou Yu rushed into the mist and caught sight of his father with an arrow in his chest on the verge of his last breath. Zhou Yu was almost in his fifties, his hair and beard were streaked with grey, he couldn't stop coughing, and blood flowed out from his mouth. Young general, the military messenger informed, Lord Zhou was imprisoned under the basement of one of the wooden houses inside the camp. Just now when the camp was captured, the enemies brought him to this place, wanting to leave the mountain. When we caught up to them, an enemy soldier shot Lord Zhou with an arrow. Zhou Yu knelt in front of his father, stiffly staring at his aging features. Soon Sa waved his hand, indicating the messenger to stop talking. The sun had just risen and was filling the mountain valley with its golden light. You air, you air, Zhou Yu replied. I, heard your voice, last night, outside the prison cell, I called out for you, you, didn't hear me. Father Zhou Yu let out a pained cry, as if his heart was torn into pieces. Don't cry, don't cry. Zhou Yi coughed hard a few times, his mouth and nose were full of blood. The arrow had pierced deeply into Zhou Yi's lungs, and soon Sa did not dare to pull the arrow out for him, fearing that pulling it out would result in him dying immediately. We human live in this world, who does not die? Zhou Yi replied, clearly exhausted. Fortunately, you're here now. Father no longer needs to return to Luyang and aid their wrongdoing any further, so become a fierce person, and handle future affairs like a tiger. Take care of your mother. Zhou Yi continued, Cough, cough, young man, you, you are. Uncle Zhou. Soon Sa replied, I'm Soon Sa, son of Soon Jian. Big, you have gotten so big, Zhou Yi let out a pleased smile. Good child. He grasped Soon Sa's hand and placed his hand on top of the back of Zhou Yu's own hand before peacefully closing his two eyes. Zhou Yu let out an agonizing cry. He lifted his head and caught sight of a cloudless blue sky as tears fell from his eyes uncontrollably. The day after, Zhou Yu brought his father back to Shu County. He prepared the coffin for viewing, sent out funeral invitations, informed friends and family, held a vigil, set up the morning hall, and consoled his weeping mother and grandmother. Wearing morning clothes, Zhou Yu felt numb as he placed a white silk ribbon onto his father's coffin. All of the Zhou's distant relatives, neighbors, and paternal cousins all came to the main hall to offer their condolences. Even the Shu County magistrate personally came as well. Each and every person comforted Zhou Yu, telling him not to grieve too much and that he must restrain his sorrow and accept the changed circumstances. Zhou Yu could only nod and personally pour tea and wine for friends and relatives. That day when Hua Xiong took advantage of the chaos and escaped, Huang Gai led the troops to chase after him, leaving behind Sun Sa who escorted Zhou Yu back home. When a group of female relatives cut out a piece of white fabric for Zhou Yu to wear for mourning, Sun Sa said from the side, Please save me a piece as well, my family and the Zhou family are long-time friends. The group of women looked at Sun Sa, his complexion was full of tiredness yet still looking very handsome. The women discussed among themselves in low voices, once again glancing at Zhou Yu sitting in the morning hall with a blank expression. One of Zhou Yu's younger female cousins put a piece of white fabric on Sun Sa's arms. Sun Sa helped Zhou Yu send off their guests, his hand holding the morning staff, he sat down and let out a sigh. What are you sighing for? Zhou Yu finally opened his mouth and asked. I'm sorry. Sun Sa said. I'm a useless person. Zhou Yu let out an exhaustive smile and said, How can I blame you for this? Life and death are ruled by fate. Bafu, if it weren't for you, I fear I wouldn't make it through this. What are you saying? Sun Sa said, not knowing whether to laugh or cry. My mother often says, There are no hurdles that cannot be overcome, only blessings that cannot be enjoyed. The future is long you have to take good care of yourself. The spring rain once again began to drizzle down. The two people sat side by side under the eaves, watching the rainfall so hard that the individual droplets seemed to merge together into long, thin threads from the sky to the earth. 
when they hit the ground, they flew back up from the ground to the sky as if they were reborn in every splash of water that blossomed. They turned the entire world into a patch of grey, disappearing just like this, seeping into the mountains and rivers, regardless of whether it was day or night. Is your mother feeling a bit better now? Soon Sa suddenly asked. She can eat some porridge now. Zhou Yu answered, I will check up on her. Soon Sa reminded Zhou Yu, so the two went inside to see Zhou Yu's mother. Zhou Yu's mother was arranging the relics that her husband left behind, bringing the maid servants with her to move the collection of books that had accumulated dust for days up to the attic. Mother. Zhou Yu called, coming in. Madam Zhou nodded her head and looked at Zhou Yu and then at Sun Sa. Despite the feeling of great grief hitting her inside, she still forced out a smile and said, Sa Er, we are so lucky to have you during this time. I did what I was supposed to do, Sun Sa replied, my father is still in Jiangdu and is unable to come on such short notice. However, he has sent out people to deliver a letter today. Soon Sa felt around for the letter and handed it to Zhou Yu's mother. Madam Zhou smiled and opened the letter to read it. The emotions contained within the letter were clear, and they expressed Soon Jian's heartfelt concerns and genuine condolences to the deceased. Zhou Yu's mother asked a few questions about the son's family matters and then proceeded to ask about Soon Sa's mother's health. She instructed Zhou Yu to set out a brush and grind ink to write a response letter to Soon Jian. Whenever Madame Zhou asked Soon Sa a question, he would respectfully reply to her question. While by the window, Zhou Yu with a brush in his hand, brought his pen to the paper and wrote down his mother's words in reply to the Sun family. The banana leaves were washed by the rain, leaving behind an exuberant green. Night fell, yet the rain remained constant. Soon Sa took off his shirt, leaving his upper arms bare, and sat with his back to Zhou Yu. Zhou Yu mixed the medicinal powder in a small dish and applied the paste onto Soon Sa's back. The two did not speak for a very long time and this memory had been carved deeply into Zhou Yu's existence. It was because Soon Sa did not say anything that Zhou Yu was able to survive this period of endless despair in his life. He didn't want to do anything and didn't want to answer any questions. It was as if he didn't know how to open his mouth and reply to anything that was asked of him. It was Soon Sa who spoke on his behalf. At night, they went to sleep on the same bed. Zhou Yu lay down. However, because of the wound on his back, Soon Sa could only lie on his stomach. Neither of them spoke a word. Soon Sa slept very quietly and would stay asleep until daybreak. Whenever Zhou Yu woke up, he would notice that Soon Sa always has gotten up earlier than him and would already busied himself in the morning hall. For the first six days, it was customary for one to keep an overnight vigil for the deceased. However, by this afternoon, several uncles and brothers from the Zhou family had came over to visit and have lunch. Zhou Yu was pouring out water with a pitcher when one paternal uncle sat down and said, You heir, we came here this time to ask you about the silk farm and how you are planning to sort out matters at the shop. Upon hearing this, Soon Sa realized that this was about the Zhou family's internal affairs and discreetly sat aside, no longer speaking anymore. Zhou Yu took a sip of water before replying, Uncles, you all have come just in time. My mother has also mentioned this yesterday, so could you all please explain your thoughts for me. The Zhou family owned a silk store and also had a mulberry field covering 100 mu which has helped provide silk for the family and covered their expenses every year. When Zhou Yi had not yet become a Xiaolian official, the Zhou family's business was extremely profitable, accounting for a total of 30% of the silk revenue in Shu County. After the old Zhou patriarch died, several brothers moved out, and Zhou Yi's branch of the family had received a piece of fertile land on the east bank of Lake Chao. The Zhou family had a mix of good and bad individuals, after many years had passed, there were members whose business became prosperous and there were also members who only knew how to loaf around and squander their share of the family fortune. By the time Zhou Yu was born, there were many Zhou family relatives with poor livelihoods. 
It just so happened that that year was when Zhou Yi was promoted to a Xialian government official and had to go to Luoyang to take up his post as a minor official. Zhou Yu was still too young, and there was no one else in the family that could take care of the property while Zhou Yi was away. Zhou Yi then decided to entrust the family's mulberry field and silk store to a few cousins for them to look after on his behalf. Now that Zhou Yi has passed, Madame Zhou believed that these lands should be taken back for Zhou Yu to manage. Zhou Yu was just about to say that he would be more mindful of the mulberry field and the silk store in the future. But then, unexpectedly, as if his uncles had already come to an agreement with each other, one of them handed Zhou Yu the ledger book and said, You heir, look at this. This is the account of recent years. Oh. Zhou Yu replied, flipping over the pages of the ledger. An uncle added, during the past few years, the production of silk in Shu County has not been favorable, and it keeps getting worse year after year. Nowadays, the world is in chaos again. In the previous year, we were still able to sell silk to Liangzhou by going west through the Silk Road. However, it was all because of your father's effort in clearing up the issues that we were able to go through the mountain pass. Now there's no one in the imperial court to vouch for us, I'm afraid that it's not as easy to take care of now. We old men have discussed this and would like to hear your opinion. What do you mean? Zhou Yu asked, raising his eyebrows in confusion. From what I see, the business is not doing well currently. Another uncle said, why not close the silk store first? And as for those mulberry fields, us uncles will help you find a household to sell to and change it into silvers, which will also be good for you when you go to the capital to become a government official. What do you think? Absolutely not. Zhou Yu said, I still haven't made up my mind about going to the capital yet. What do we need to sell the silk store for? Not to keep it from you but, that paternal uncle replied, when your father asked us to help take care of the business these past few years, the business hasn't been doing well compared to previous ones. As of now, there have been too many merchants not paying for their goods. There are also some that failed to pay once the end of the year came around and some that took the goods only for them to be robbed along their journey by the yellow turban bandies. It was just a few days ago your sixth uncle brought the shipment to the capital and was also robbed. He even lost a significant amount of money on transportation expenses. These uncles of yours have all paid money in advance for you, yet your household often comes to collect money from the shop. Zhou Yu immediately understood. These people saw that his father had just died and the Zhou family had fallen from grace, so they all came running to scheme after the mulberry field that was left behind by his father, wanting to cajole Zhou Yu into selling it in order to get some money out of it. How much is the debt? Zhou Yu firmly cut off the conversation, bring the debt certificate here. Everything must be calculated to the fullest, then we will pay it back slowly. They looked at each other, not at all expecting how straightforward Zhou Yu was. One uncle then said, I'm also quite old, and my brain can't understand this business. Then please go back and enjoy yourself. Zhou Yu got up and politely bowed to the ground to his uncle in courtesy. Another younger uncle said, You heir, it's not that I'm blaming you, but the mulberry fields have been left vacant, and there's no place to sell the merchandise now. Just look at the ledger and see. When your father was still running the store, us uncles put down a lot of silver in advance, and when your father was still alive, we had agreed that for the silk shop and the mulberry fields, one share would go to each of us. Back then, it was because of this that we agreed to help your dad out with running the business. The business is not just yours alone. Expenses like hiring a shopkeeper and inviting sales clerks for document keeping were also money that we uncle signed for. These are troubled times. An uncle patiently said, silvers can only count as money when it's in your hands right. If the yellow turban bandits ravage this place as well, you also understand, that if they set it all on fire, then it would. Hat. Soon Sa coldly smiled, I can see it now. You all have come here to bully an orphan and widow to steal their lands right. What are you talking about? 
That uncle with the worst personality said angrily, his face flushed red with anger. We have kept watch of the store for so many years, putting all of our hard work into it. Not to mention, it was from his father's own mouth that promised us this when he was alive. Who do you think you are? Soon Sa got angry as well and coldly said, Are you all even human? Do you think I don't know what kind of ulterior motives you all are harboring? Some days ago when I went out to do some shopping, I saw many people come and go to the Joe family silk store. Since when has the shop been in debt? What did Lord Joe say? Words are not evidence, you must get a written contract for this to be valid. Do you think you can just rely on your own mouth to extort people? I'm sorry to let you down, but friends of the Joe family are not dead yet. Gong Jin does not agree. Why don't you try selling the land and see? Several uncles became furious. Zhou Yu pondered for a moment then said, keep the ledger here with me. I will check the accounts of the past few years and see if the deficit is big. If it is then. Go inform the government official. Soon Sa said, not bothering to be polite with them anymore, find the county magistrate and find out how much of the silk store's business has been done under the table, and how much has been counted as a loss. Joe Yu replied, oh, all right. You little bastard, the uncle roared, rolling up his sleeves, you've cursed us out enough. If I don't teach you a little lesson, then you wouldn't stop treating. After returning home, Joe Yu did not mention Soon Sa's identity, so everyone merely thought that Soon Sa was simply a pampered young master from a wealthy family. Now, the uncle had been humiliated by Soon Sa's words, and upon seeing a junior be so disrespectful in front of him, he was about to go up and give him a proper beating. He hadn't expected that Soon Sa would attack when he said he would, and he stuck his left foot out, hooking that bench towards him. Joe Yu said, stop it. The younger uncle seized Soon Sa, planning to hit him, but Soon Sa had already kicked the bench into the air. No matter what, he would be offending them either way, so he might as well beat them up first before continuing. At this, Zhou Yu felt that he had no way to deal with Soon Sa, and despite the fire of anger in himself, he went up to stop him. But, he accidentally caught Soon Sa's bench, and with a push of his palm, the bench whooshed over and struck the waist of the younger uncle, sending him flying out of the hall. Several people let out loud curses, but when Soon Sa waved that bench around, no one dared to step forward. All of them could only spout curses as they backed up, running off in the end. Zhou Yu held the ledger book, flung it out with his hand, and then said, Who knows how much you defrauded, yet you dare to divide the field? Keep these stolen goods well you thieves, and look out for the county magistrate to reward you all 80 big flogs. After everyone had left, Zhou Yu and Soon Sa looked at each other in dismay, and then burst out laughing. Zhou Yu laughed until his tears came out before supporting himself against a column, slowly sitting down. A short moment later, Zhou Yu began to sob incessantly, overcome with grief. Soon Sa sat beside him, putting one hand over Zhou Yu's shoulder. After a few moments, Zhou Yu gradually stopped crying, his two eyes red as he let out a bitter laugh. That night, the families of those uncles stopped by, each of them with their hands on their hips, pointing at Zhou Yu and Soon Sa and scolding them. Zhou Yu pretended he didn't hear them. However, Soon Sa sloppily sat in the morning hall hugging his knees, toying with them with a sentence or two. Everyone bickered for ages before Zhou Yu finally roared, Will this ever end? If you want to break off family relations then do it, don't come to my house ever again in the future. Zhou Yu's roar was like thunder from a clear sky, frightening them to death, as this was the first time they had seen him angry, so they quickly retreated one by one. Zhou Yu coldly said, All of you get out. End chapter. Twin Jades of Jiangdong. Chapter 4. Shu County. Zhou Yu's temperament was also quite stubborn, so he was not willing to compromise with these people at all. On the second day was the funeral procession for Zhou Yi, 
and the people of Shu County were scattered along the whole ten miles to send him off. The county magistrate was also there, and while Zhou Yu wept his heart out, Sun Sa walked behind him and talked to the county magistrate in a low voice for a while. When it was time to send the coffin up the mountain, Sun Sa also began to let out an earth-shaking cry. Oh, old master Zhou. Sun Sa bawled, merely crying at the top of his lungs without shedding any tears. Your body has not yet gone cold, but already there are people trying to steal your Zhou family's land and business. Zhou Yu. And I mean your widow and fatherless son. After hearing Sun Sa's howling, Zhou Yu couldn't bring himself to cry anymore and he quickly said, Enough, enough. These words were heard by everyone who accompanied the funeral procession along the way, so naturally, the Shu County Magistrate heard them as well. The expressions of those close relatives who knew of the internal affairs became unpleasant, while distant relatives that didn't know began to gossip among themselves, pointing their fingers at others. Soon Sa sobbed out a few more sentences before finally stopping, accompanying Zhou Yu up the mountain. The afternoon after the burial, Soon Sa and Zhou Yu personally went to visit the silk store. Zhou Yu wrote an announcement that the business would close temporarily and he gave a sum of money to the shopkeeper and the employees as he sent them away to find new jobs so he could recruit new staff. The mulberry fields became temporarily off-limits, leaving behind only a few mulberry farmers to take care of the trees and wait for the spring of the coming year to raise silkworms again. In late spring, the peach blossoms in Shu County were everywhere, covering the mountains and the plains, blooming in bright splendor. After being so busy for many days, Zhou Yu was finally done. He and Sun Sa headed back to the Zhou Manor, walking side by side. As Sun Sa looked at the vast fertile land stretching long in the distance, across the green hills and clear waters, he said, Gong Jin, I suddenly think that perhaps you really should sell off the fields. Why? Zhou Yu asked, do you need the money? Sun Sa joked, if I was asking you to lend me money, would you sell the fields? Zhou Yu replied without even needing to think about it, if you need money, then naturally I would sell them. Do you need the money? Sun Sa waved his hand and said, I'm thinking, would you be willing to accompany me to Changsha after this to plan out an errand? My army is missing a main records keeper. If you come, the two of us can be together every day, drinking wine, and practicing the sword. Zhou Yu said, no. Why? Sun Sa walked backwards in front of Zhou Yu, his new boots completely covered with mud. With my parents here, I will not travel far. Zhou Yu answered simply in a few words. Sun Sa smiled and continued the other half of the sentence, and to travel, it must be for a just cause, isn't that what comes next? Zhou Yu said, wait a bit longer, I understand your thoughts. However, my father has just passed, and my mother at home has no one to accompany her. I'm afraid that she will become ill. When Sun Sa thought about it, it made sense, so he could only nod his head. A moment later, he said, yesterday, Fei brought over news, my father is urging me to go back. Zhou Yu immediately froze for a moment, feeling an indescribable feeling of loss in his heart. You're leaving so soon? Zhou Yu asked. He wants me to help usurp the thief. Sun Sa turned around again, returning to walking side by side with Zhou Yu, as he casually continued, I also don't want to part with you either, which is why I asked. If you're willing to go, then come with me on my expedition. Your fighting skills are very good, and I will also protect you. You don't have to be charging in the front lines during battle, all you need to do is to help me with the ledger book and come up with some plans for me. Zhou Yu replied, with you, you reckless monkey, you think you can protect me. Soon Sa smiled and said, you don't believe me? You clearly haven't seen me on the battlefield yet. I do believe you. Zhou Yu said softly. When he saw Sun Sa fighting that day, it was as if he was a fierce tiger leaving the mountain, his prowess was known far and wide. What would a young hero look like? It would be exactly like what Sun Sa looked like then. 
Soon Sa then said, If you are worried about your mother, you can bring her along to my residence in Changsha. It's also convenient, she can talk to my mother to relieve boredom. Zhou Yu's heart wavered a little bit in that split second. But, with such a large family business like this, Zhou Yu couldn't just simply get up and go, nor could he abandon it just like that. The journey would be long and difficult, and he was afraid that the long trip would wear down his mother, and that she would not be accustomed to the change in scenery. If he went, that meant that he was giving up the family business in Shu County. Also, although he and Soon Sa had a good relationship, Soon Jian's subordinates, particularly seasoned old generals who had fought hundreds of battles, might not necessarily treat him as well as Soon Sa did. It was never easy to take shelter with someone else. Ultimately, he could not overcome this barrier that he himself had erected. Soon Sa watched Zhou Yu expectantly, and there was a moment when Zhou Yu nearly nodded his head, but he ended up saying, after a few days ba. When? Soon Sa asked as he stopped walking. When are you going back? Zhou Yu asked instead. Soon Sa replied I have to leave tomorrow morning. Zhou Yu immediately felt a feeling of discomfort in his heart. He had originally planned to leave 10 days to half a month to resolve this matter first, before asking for his mother's permission. After carefully mulling over matters, he would then leave with Soon Sa, but he hadn't expected Soon Sa's departure to be so urgent. He had already wasted so much time staying by Zhou Yu's side, and the military situation was urgent, so Soon Sa couldn't be forced to stay. Zhou Yu lifted his eyes to look at Soon Sa, and the two of them stared at each other in silence for a long time. Suddenly, Soon Sa suddenly said, Gong Jin, I genuinely want you to come with me. It really isn't because I pity you for not having a place to go. Zhou Yu said, You thought about this too deeply, I have never thought of it that way. You helped save my father and accompanied me over the past few days. I'm really. Zhou Yu looked away. A moment later he finally said, Bafu, you are a man capable of accomplishing great things. Really? Soon Sa laughed and said, Quite a few people have also said the same thing. There you go again. Zhou Yu said, not knowing whether to cry or laugh. Zhou Yu took a step and began to walk away. Soon Sa followed behind him, and earnestly said, Gong Jin, I'm desperately in need of someone who can assist me. I came to find you this time because I want to ask you to come over and help me, but with all of the things that happened, I couldn't find a good time to bring this up with you. As long as you come under my command, whatever I achieve in the future. Zhou Yu stopped in his steps. Zhou Yu knew Soon Sa was making a promise to him. He gently nodded his head and replied, Bafu, I believe that in the coming days, if you do not become a famous general, then you will be one of the three ministers, I really do believe so. But right now, I'm not good enough, I believe so myself. What? Soon Sa asked, feeling surprised by Zhou Yu's comment. Give me a little time. Zhou Yu said in a low voice. Is that all right? When I feel like I'm competent enough to assist you, I will come find you. How much time do you need? Soon Sa said, smiling. Don't say 10 or 12 years, I won't be able to wait that long. Three years. Zhou Yu said. Soon Sa did not reply. Zhou Yu knew he was reluctant to agree, and he himself was afraid that Soon Sa wouldn't be able to wait that long, so he didn't mention it again. The two of them were stuck in their own thoughts as they slowly walked along the road. Petals from the late spring peach blossoms fluttered in the wind as many children ran across the embankment, tugging along their soaring kites. Want to go fly kites? Zhou Yu asked. Soon Sa nodded, and Zhou Yu went out to buy a kite from a peasant family. The two of them climbed onto a canopy boat, and Soon Sa held onto the kite as he tugged its string, letting the kite soar with the wind against the backdrop of the distant landscape that resembled an ink painting. Zhou Yu sat cross-legged at the bow of the boat, lifting his head to watch like a small child would, while Soon Sa stood at the stern, his hand holding the kite string. All right. 
Soon Sa suddenly answered. Zhou Yu looked back and saw Soon Sa's cheerful bright smile. Three years is just three years. You are just like this kite, your string is in my hand, so you will always come back to me in the end. Soon Sa said, smiling. Zhou Yu smiled and said nothing. He then took a gookin from inside the boat, pondered deeply for a moment, before his hand plucked the five strings, and the crystal clear sound of the gookin resonated under the fine sky. The following day, the mountain and forests were covered by a curtain of mist. Soon Sa and Zhou Yu hadn't slept for the entire night, instead choosing to lay in bed and talk all night long. In fact, Zhou Yu was still yawning when he went to see Soon Sa off. Soon Sa, on the other hand, was in high spirits as he led his horse by the rain, bidding farewell to Zhou Yu. No need to see me off any further. Soon Sa said, remember, three years. I will remember. Zhou Yu tiredly replied. The white falcon flew over and landed on Zhou Yu's shoulder. Soon Sa said, Fi Yu will deliver news to you on my behalf. Take good care of yourself. Zhou Yu took a step forward, and instantly he was overwhelmed by a mixture of feelings, making him stop in his tracks. However, Soon Sa immediately understood his thoughts and, throwing all thoughts of restraint out of his mind, he stepped forward to hug Zhou Yu tightly, the two stood like that on the mountain road. After a while, Soon Sa patted Zhou Yu's back and pushed him away, and without saying any words, Soon Sa mounted his horse. Chia. In that instant when Soon Sa turned around, Zhou Yu clearly saw his two reddened eyes, but Soon Sa did not say anything. There was only the sound of horse hooves as he left along the mountain road, disappearing into the mist in the blink of an eye. The autumn wind blowing outside stirring one's thoughts as the sun rises, and when it's bright out one will know what to do then. A white falcon passed through thousands of crags and torrents, sweeping past Lake Chao, disturbing the autumn water in the lake, sending ripples echoing outwards. The white falcon flew toward a canopy boat and landed next to the fisherman standing at the bow of the boat. The fisherman wore a bamboo hat, one leg dangling about four kun away from the surface of the lake, swaying back and forth. Another young man laid lazily at the bow of the boat, wearing a set of beautiful brocade long robes. His face resembles fine jade, his eyebrows delicate like mountains in the winter, his lips red as cinnabar, his teeth as white as snow, and his eyes as bright as stars. Zai Jing, the fisherman said to that young man, can you check if that's our bird? The young man who had been called Zai Jing, was named Lu Su. He didn't even bother lifting up his eyelids as he said, so you came all the way here to fish just to wait for that white bird. That is it. Bafu's letter has come. The fisherman reeled in his rod, taking out a small fish from his basket and feeding it to the white falcon. The white falcon hopped a few times at the bow of the boat, raising its eyes to look at the fisherman. The fisherman took off his bamboo hat, revealing a handsome face that was Zhou Yu. Lu Su casually said, it's this bird again, it's soon Bafu again, even hearing their names annoy me now. Zhou Gongjin, my guess is there are still no results. Come here. Zhou Yu said, smiling. The white falcon hopped over and Lu Su used his finger to flick it. The white falcon was obviously had been teased by Lu Su before, as soon as it saw his finger coming, it hurriedly hopped away. In an earnest manner, Lu Su held a small fish out to the bird to lure it over. With that, the white falcon finally carefully approached him. The corner of Lu Su's mouth faintly curled up as he said blithely, Other falcons eat meat you're the only one which feeds on fish. The white falcon stared at Lu Su, tilting its head. Zhou Yu stroked its head and asked, where's Bafu's letter? Lu Su held out its claw, untying a very small tube from its leg, taking a letter out from inside. To my Zion Di Gongjin. We have parted for several years. How have you been in recent days? Within the next few days, Xiong will lead his army up north. Zhang Ju's power is gone and the chaos of the yellow turbans eliminated, but He Jin lured the Marquis of Mei, Dongzhou, into the capital, sending the situation in Luoyang into extreme disarray. 
The Liang Province Army is currently garrisoned in Guangdong, where it is easy for them to cause trouble. On behalf of my father, Xiang has taken charge and deployed troops to avoid possible rebellions. The number of refugees in front of the Hulao Pass is increasing, and the common people have been unable to bear with the disturbance. For the goods that Di mentioned, Xiang has tried his best and investigated many different possibilities, but to no avail. I worry that you will be anxious, so I have decided to pass on the news to you in advance. Xiandi, do not be anxious, being impatient won't get you hot tofu wait for Xiang to slowly investigate. Two years of the three-year promise have already passed, and an advisor position remains vacant in Xiang's army. Please give my regards to Ant on my behalf. Don't miss me too much, Xiandi. Bafu. Sure enough, he basically said the equivalent of nothing, Lu Su, relentlessly mocked Zhou Yu, whose expression was set in one of resignation. Lu Su said, the letter has been received, is it time to go back? You can go back first, Zhou Yu said, so younger sister-in-law doesn't scold you again. You're the one getting scolded. It is only because you don't have a wife to mind you, and you're laughing at me. When will you get married? You should hurry up and satisfy the hearts of all those girls. Lu Su replied, patting his clothes. Zhou Yu, I'll stay back to fish a little more. Something on your mind. What things can be on my mind? I only want to fish. Your words don't match your heart. Lu Su declared, grabbing a convenient wooden plank from the boat and tossing it across the surface of the lake. He then stepped on the boat's side and shot out quickly like an arrow from a bow. With his body in mid-air, one hand behind his back and his foot bent slightly, Lu Su touched down onto the plank, making half of the wooden plank dip under the clear autumn water, sending ripples halfway across the lake. He then flew to the shore, landing onto the ground in a leisurely manner, looking incessantly confident and at ease. The blue jade-like water reflected Zhou Yu's handsome side profile and the mountain ranges. Holding a fishing rod in his hand, he sat there wordlessly as if he was a statue. It wasn't until it began to rain, thousands of blooming flowers of all sizes blossoming on the surface of Lake Chao, that Zhou Yu finally let out a long sigh and lifted the fishing rod and bucket as he headed back home. Two years had passed since he and Sun Sa parted from each other. Emperor Ling had passed away and Emperor Xian ascended the throne. The news from Luoyang grew more and more tense day after day. One moment, it was about how He Jin led Dong Zhou into the capital, leading to Lu Bulet in killing Ding Yuan and switching to Dong Zhou's side. The people in the capital were distressed at that, and many rich noble families fled out of Guangdong, one after the other. The next moment, there were people saying the thief Dong had usurped the throne and gained control of Emperor Xian, reigning supreme over the imperial officials. Then, some people said various world-famous heroes had banded together, with the revered Yuan Shao as their head, pledging to suppress Dong Zhou. Everywhere was a buzz with the news, and even Jiang Zuo was also affected by this tense atmosphere. In fact, more guards were patrolling the roads in the area. The autumn rain pattered down bleakly as the mountain ranges were shrouded in the smoke of the approaching dust. Zhou Yu, wearing a bamboo hat and carrying the bucket, waked up along the meandering mountain with the white falcon that Sun Sa had given him two years before on his shoulder. Over the past two years, their letters had never stopped. From time to time, Zhou Yu would write a letter to Sun Sa. Sun Sa, on the other hand, responded to Zhou Yu's letter even quicker. However, the exchange was merely full of unimportant matters, as if they were children arguing with each other. The letters kept going back and forth, and the contents only discussed the peach blossoms blooming and withering, the water level of Lake Chao rising and falling, the changing of the four seasons, and the constant renewing of nature. It wasn't until half a year ago, at the beginning of spring, that the store in Shu County began its normal routine of dispatching caravans along the usual route, passing through the Hang Pass towards Liang Province, and from there, entering the Silk Road to trade with the western regions. However, that very year, the turbulent situation had grown beyond Zhou Yu's control. 
less than three months after the merchants set off on their journey, they sent news a large number of shipments had been seized. That caravan contained not only the Joe's family silk, but also all of the people who did commercial business in Shoe County. All of it went missing, and only two mules were escorted back by the officials at the rest in who were coincidentally heading that way as well. When they realized the turbulence of the world had already reached their lands, all of the influential families in Shoe County panicked at once, each of them sending people to ask around for information. However, the 36 members of that caravan were like a stone sinking into the deep sea and were never heard from again. The goods could be abandoned, as long as the people came back. However, if they were alive, the people were missing, if they were dead, no corpses were found. The workers at Zhou Yu's silk shop had been at their jobs for less than a year, but human lives were priceless, so he had no choice but to hastily write a letter to Sun Sa requesting help. Sun Sa repeatedly comforted Zhou Yu, but both knew that during this turbulent era, human lives were like grass, and that there was probably no hope. If there was someone working in the imperial court as a petty official, maybe they would still be able to share information and inquire after the whereabouts of the caravan. Meanwhile, the families of those 36 people, their orphans and widows, could only cry all day long as they held on to that slim glimmer of hope. End chapter.